Now says Metro agrees with MGM's version of what happened leading up to the 1 October shooting. This after the company released its statement yesterday. And the sheriff says a Mandalay Bay security guard was checking out an incident on the 32nd floor at 9.59 p.m. We're told the security guard was shot by Stephen Paddock at 10.05 p.m. And 40 seconds later, Paddock turned and fired at the crowd down below. The rest of the timeline remains the same. Contact 13 investigative reporter Joe Bartels was at Metro's news conference today. And Joe, we saw a lot of emotion from the sheriff. Yeah, Steve, we really did. And um, it really goes to show that just how this is going to be affecting so many people here. Um, Steve, in addition to the emotion, there was some clarity about the moments leading up to the Las Vegas shooting. He also included details on how the shooter targeted McCarran International Airport, but his emotion raw and at the surface as he talked about how his officers braved the bullets and helped those in need. Brady sustained a substantial wound to his shoulder, uh, through his bicep, into his chest, and out his back. He asked me if he could go back to work today. The sheriff visibly emotional, mentioning officers by name and how they helped during the shooting rampage. Samuel Whitwer. Excuse me for my emotion. The sheriff says some of his guys were badly hurt, but still did their jobs in the chaos. Despite the high emotions, the sheriff revealed new details. 959 is important. It wasn't inaccurate when I provided it to you. The circumstances associated with it is inaccurate. First, the timeline. Investigators believing security officer Jesus Campos arrived on the 32nd floor at 9.59 to investigate a door alarm on a hotel room near the suspects. Metro now says Campos was shot closer to 10.05, aligning with the MGM's timetable released yesterday, which says Campos was shot at nearly the same time or within 40 seconds of the mass shooting outside, not the six-minute gap given earlier this week by police. To date, we have found no signs of ideology or affiliation to any groups. The FBI moving forward with its side of the investigation, reviewing thousands of videos, witness statements, and clues pulled from the suspect's mesquite home. So far, none of them helpful, pointing to a clear motive, and police giving a glimpse into the gunman's appetite for destruction. It is believed the fuel tanks were fired upon with intent. Contact 13 has reported the McCarran aircraft fuel storage tanks were hit by gunfire, perhaps in an effort by the gunman to create even more carnage. Investigators say aviation fuel probably wouldn't ignite by gunfire despite the gunman's attempt. And we're told that airport authorities are consulting with security experts if any changes need to be made in the wake of the shooting. And also tonight, guys, uh, later on at 6 o'clock, we're going to be looking at uh, some of the folks that are out of medical treatment, but also the additional details that we're tracking in terms of the autopsy done on the right. suspect and what authorities hope to learn from that. We all still want to know why this happened. Yep, absolutely. All right. Difficult. Thank you, Joe. All right. And the sheriff also says of the 546 people who were injured, 45 remain hospitalized tonight. Some are in critical condition. 58 people have died. And the sheriff says that number could go up. 501 people have been treated and released.